<laughs> All right. We're recording now. Here we go. Welcome to the Big Honker Podcast brought to you by Boss Shot Shells. I'm Jeff Stanfield with the world famous Andy Shaver. That's right. That's right. Boss Shot Shells. So go to BossShotShells.com straight to your door. The Stanfield Nines are out there. If you're teal hunting this weekend or if you're still banging on doves, the Nines are the way to go. With us today, the, 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 the used marathon to be, man used to be the most eligible bachelor. Not anymore. He's taken, ladies. Sorry. You missed your shot. Sorry. Maddie Robertson. Yep. Yep. Sorry, lady, but uh, done taking applications and hired somebody. <laughs> hired somebody. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to tell you, a lot of dreams just got killed. They there. did. <laughs> they did. Unfortunately. <laughs> I feel bad for them because, you know, there were a lot of women that were holding out hope. Like, he's single. He's coming to my town. I still got a shot. And then they go to your Instagram and you're going to fucking weddings now with this girl. And they're just like, well, there went that shot. Uh, Yep, shots out the window, boys. I mean, sorry, ladies, but uh, yeah, I got one locked me up. And it's not the stalker lady we're proud to hear. We thought Andy thought you had a weak moment, moment of weakness. Oh, weak moments. No, I was not about to look the devil in the eyes. In person, yeah. <laughs> Is that the scaredest that you've ever been? Yeah, all time. That, like I've flipped vehicles. All dude, I've done a bunch of dumb stuff. Four old foolers on top of me. Well, I've never been that scared <laughs> <laughs> of a woman. That's what's crazy. Of a girl, yeah. They're, women are crazy though. Some of them, 120 pound girl, probably. I'm sorry. Yeah, like I hate to say it, it's kind of like I, I think about it every once in a while. It's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> and you and you're not afraid to uh, you know you're not afraid to scrap it up. You're you're wrestling these big guys on the fishing tournament, but that 120 pound chick, she got you. I'll straight up bang with anybody. I don't care. I don't care to fight. I don't care to wrestle. I don't care about none of it. But I'm going to tell you right now, like, I thought I was going <laughs> to die. Like, I mean, I'm telling you. How many are, are, are you a scrapper in your, uh, in your previous life before the fishing tournament? Were you, were you a mixer upper? Yeah, I'd bang a, a little bit. bit. You, I ain't going to say I was great excited about damn sure what's You weren't going to back it. down. Cause who's the one guy, who's the no, one guy that I, you fight, that you wrestle all the time? The big guy. What's his name? Oh, Summerall, great big dude. He's two feet. He's two seventy right now, and almost nothing but muscle, dude. Like I'm talking about cut up, and uh, he's a man of a man of a man. He told me that he could. He just whips your ass at ease. Um. Well. <laughs> well, I ain't gonna lie. One time I had him in a headlock. Like I straight up had him locked in tight. He grabs my hand. And just peels it off like a damn fruit roll-up, <laughs> unwinding. And I'm like, all right. So I really don't know if it is possible for me to beat him. I'd wrestle him again right now. But, like, I literally had him locked up, and he just peeled my arm off of him. Like, what do you do? What do you do with that? There's nothing you can do. I saw him at the, at, at, yeah. I saw him at the Classic, and, I mean, he's a he's a beefy I'm man. Sure. Dude, grab a hold Fuck of that. No, man. I'm smarter than that. I stuck my shirt. Grand team just to try to move him as like a hit a damn piece of steel. I have been uh, I've been doing I've gotten more serious or more regular with my uh, going to jujitsu again, and I think that yeah. every man needs to do that because you realize how helpless you are in a street fight and how like your gas tank is not yours because you run all the time, but the average yeah. guy uh, that kind of walks around <laughs> with his chest puffed out, you know, like. Oh, I'll just see red in a fight, and you know my body will take over, and I'll just start knocking heads around. It's like, no, no, you won't. You'll last about fifteen seconds, and then you're gonna be fucking sucking wind. Fifteen to thirty. You go thirty seconds. You did yeah. something. Now, how far are you running now? Um, every day I'm running between 
three and four miles, and then once or twice a week, I'll kick her up about six or seven. Are your knees okay? This is very hard on your joints. No, yeah, dude. Um, been so I got two or three different pairs of shoes, swapping out the shoes every couple of days. And uh, yeah, dude, the knees ain't hurting me at all. You're like a new man. From the first time that we talked to you, you know, you, you were this wild guy and, you know. Buying you, steaks at Dollar General if they yeah, had them. Yeah, you'd buy steaks. Now you're fucking running. and You'd still go to Dollar General and buy a steak? Well, we're still shopping at the Dollar General for sure. <laughs> so this this new woman is this is she a fitness freak? Is this what you got into all the fitness for? Or uh, no, no, no. I might have to stay in the fitness to keep her around because as you can see, she's a looker, <laughs> you know, good looking lady. And uh, so I got to keep uh, keep everything tight, looking good. But no, no, she's uh, she is not a fitness girl. So she's not she's not pushing you to do this. This is your own deal. Oh no, yeah. She she hates working out. <laughs> <laughs> hates it. How did y'all meet? Um, a friend of a friend on uh, on the Elite Series, man. Uh a guy who fishes the Elite Series, it was his wife's uh his wife's friend and we met at the uh, Bassmaster Classic in Knoxville. Well, son of a bitch. Well, maybe we met her then. She did it. Yeah. She did it. I think she could resist me and not like me, but it's the hair. Is, is she, it the hair or the beard? Wh- which one's the bigger magnet now? Uh, I got to tell you, dude, like, I ain't going to lie. The beard, I think it's a combination. Yeah. Like, it's a one-two right. punch, but it's definitely dialed in. <laughs> You're all fucking dialed in. The hair's nice. The beard's nice. You're getting your body. Oh, yeah. Starting to see some six-pack coming through. Are we got Are we got a big sponsorship but, coming, like, by Nike or somebody on the fishing series now? No, but we ought to have. Huh? I need some damn sponsors, some whitey tights. You know what? Whitey I'm telling tights. you right now, you need to get with, it, it's got to be Nike. You could just do the redo, the just do it deal. Bo knows, Matt knows. Dude, you ain't wrong. I I'm telling you, you, this could be a remake of East Bounty Down <laughs> with Kenny Powers. Nike needs some street cred back anyway, so I feel like I'd be, you know, I, I could probably help them out with that. Yeah, with all the woke stuff, like that'd be that that would be the opposite way. You fishing in a you yeah. fishing in a thong would be the greatest commercial ever. Yeah, I mean, instead of being woke, I'd want to say they'd be put back to sleep. But if they saw me in a thong or some underwear, then they ain't nobody going to be asleep after seeing that. <laughs> Everybody's going to be fully awake. <laughs> if they, they, you know, they might be asleep because they all be dreaming about me. But uh, <laughs> that, but then again. Well, it could be a nightmare, too. But <laughs> not, now. not now. I'm telling you right now, one of those fishing companies, Ugly Stick or Mr. Wiggles or something, <laughs> is missing a perfect opportunity for a marketing deal right here. Oh, I ain't no doubt. Yeah. I mean, sure. it, it, it is, uh, it's right there. The man right yep. the man. I'm telling you, this would be the greatest deal ever. The greatest marketing ever is to put Maddie in a thong fishing with uh, with it's 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 a perfect recipe right there now you've got Hi, you've got your sunglass deal now don't you yeah yeah i got me some uh, waterland sunglasses and i got some custom frames and stuff and uh yeah pretty sharp yeah i see you looking good every time i took on look on facebook there you are promoting f- f- uh, sunglasses yeah there ain't no doubt every time you see me i'm looking good <laughs> <laughs> so, i wish i had your confidence maddie how was how, how was the fishing season? Hold on, what do you what you say? You don't have that type of confidence. No, fuck no. I'm 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 way insecure about everything. What? Yeah. I am. Yeah. You ought to be a baller. No, man. What? I don't know what it is. I've always had it. <clears throat> huh. But I think that is what maybe like I've always kind of felt like. My best is never good enough, so maybe that's what keeps me always going forward. I think if I had confidence, I'd just be a lazy piece of shit. That's possible. So I go the opposite way. I don't have a good voice inside my head. Yeah. Dude, I'll be honest with you. Like, I'm probably a little overconfident. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> but it works for you. Hey, look. I mean, oh, yeah. fuck. Look where you are now, and your confidence is what got you there. Ain't no doubt about it, because I didn't have nothing else at times. <laughs> nothing else but a big dick and a big dream. Uh, and it swings. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah. Sometimes that's all you need, though. Fucking balls in a dream, baby. Go after it. Definitely got to have a set. You got to have a set. So how how is the fishing done? Are y'all done for the year? Yeah, yeah, we're done for the year. I'm actually, man, I've been contemplating. There's a bass open at Lake of the Ozarks next week, and uh, practice starts at this coming Sunday, and I've been, like, beating myself up to go or not, and I think I decided to go today. You're going to so, go? Yeah, yeah. And where's this at? Uh, Lake of the oh, Ozarks okay. in Missouri. And then, so, so you can do that? You can just hop in any open that you want to? Um. As long as I got open spots, and I think that I called the other day and they had some open spots, so I think I'm good. But there's nothing in the Bassmaster that would keep you out of these? As long as I ain't been on the lake, no. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Now, what what do you think it's going to be like when you show up to this thing, and all you got all your ordinary guys that are there, and it's like, well, fucking shit. Here's Maddie. Uh, now, there's some good fishermen in it, and... uh real good fishermen you know it's probably they're they're some of the best and dude like i'm going out there to throw big swim baits big glide baits and i'm going to win so you better hope i ain't catching them or we're bringing a trophy home <laughs> he's going into an open next week or this weekend Where, where's it at lake of the ozarks Oof, good pretty place that's like not very far from home is it uh it's about five and a half hours but i'm in north carolina right now so I got to track it about seven hours, probably about 13 hours. I need to go, I got to go home for a few days first, get, uh, get a few things dialed in and, uh, check my mail. And dumb stuff. So are you basically living in the Carolinas now? Uh, no, I wouldn't say living in the Carolinas. I'm out here. Uh, I'll come out here for a week or so and see the girlfriend and then I'll, uh, then I'll go home and then come back out, you know, just back. And forth. So she, she lives in Carolinas then. Yeah. Yeah. She, she lives in the oh, Carolinas. Maddie's going to be a Carolina resident pretty quick. You're going to give up the trailer. <laughs> oh no, we're never selling the trailer ever. Now I ain't going to say I ain't going to get a second trailer in the Carolinas, <laughs> but we are never getting rid of that trailer. Well, how's ever. the Airbnb deal going? Wasn't you going to VRBO it or Airbnb it? <laughs> It'll be ready in November. People can stay in your house. Yeah, like legit, it's going to be set up. People come stay in the house. Uh, my buddy, it's a, been a little slower going. The guy who did my cabinets uh, at the wood shop in Anderson, yep. uh, he uh, he's had uh, been working on a on a on his house and doing everything. So my back deck that's going to be a pontoon's been put on the back burner, and they're starting on it this week and. He's going to come out, do that. We're going to do the last of the renovations to the trailer. And my buddy from up in Maine is going to come down and uh, dig my pond out bigger with the excavator at the same time. So, Jeez. yeah. You're going to be making money hand over fist. People are going to be like bragging and they had sex in your bed. Listen, I'll, I'll let y'all two come stay <laughs> for free. <laughs> we, we appreciate that. I don't want to have sex in your bed, though. <laughs> Change the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> Change the sheets, please. Oh, oh yeah. I will. <laughs> what what's the, what's the boy's name that owns a cabinet shop? Hung out with him in Knoxville. Great guy. Uh, Willie. Willie, yeah. Uh, I liked Willie. Yeah, yeah. Wood shop Anderson man builds the baddest cabinets on the planet. No joke. Super super nice guy. Yeah, dude. One of the best dudes I've ever met in my life. Yeah, he's he's really good. So, how would you? How is the fishing season been for you? How would you rank it? Um, I'd give it about an eight, an eight. I've I, I did real good in tournaments, but the ones I didn't do real like I had two that I did real bad in, like at the beginning of the year. And uh, but yeah, other than that, I'd say I'd give it about an eight. We ended up twelfth in points. Uh, won a decent chunk of change again, and yeah, dude, like. Expanded the brand. We're balling right now. It's so, better than having a real job, isn't it? Oh, beats the hell out of the real job. Because what did what did you do before? You did concrete, or you spray? You were you had a a power washer company, didn't you? Pressure washing. Like I mean, I made decent money doing it. Hard ass work. And uh, but I'm telling you, it. I don't. I remember the real shitty job. Like I remember it. Yeah. Yeah, that's important too. Like you got to have something that you don't want to go back to. That's why I think yeah. kids that come out of high school 
Find the shittiest job. Do do everything. Go go be a pizza cook. Go go fucking cut grass. Go bust your ass so that you have something to run away from. Go sack groceries at Albertsons. That's what I did, and I fucking hated that shit. <laughs> Worst fucking job in the whole world. I'm telling you right now, I would put it worse than scraping barnacles off a fucking boat. Buddy, I worked at McDonald's whenever I was 16, got fired six times before I was actually fired. That's, <laughs> that's... How, did, how did you get fired six times, but you just kept showing up? So you got the managers that work there, you know what I'm saying? You The, the people with the blue shirts on. But then you got a regional manager, and you know they like the managers could fire you or whatever. But um, you know I was young, mildly like, buddy, you think I'm mildly now? You should hurt me whenever I was younger, smart ass, buddy. And I toned her down quite a bit, I calmed her down a lot, oh. you know. And so like one time, like we'd be working back there, and I'd be smarting off or something, and they tried to tell me to leave for that, and like whatever. Well, one time we was back there, and. We, you know, you grill the patties and then you got to, you put one, you had a season shaker. You, you know, put one shake of season on each patty. But we thought we'd be, be funny one day. And we just sat there and, you know, and like piled the season up on a patty, put it in there. And then we sent it, made a burger and sent it out. This lady come in saying she about wrecked because of choking and everything because the season was on there so hard. And they come back there. Slam the patty down like who did this? Well, and I'm on the grill, of course. It's like who the hell did it? And they're like, who did this? We want to know. And they're and my two boys back there. I went to school with them. Like they didn't rat on me. We were solid. And I was like, whoever did this is getting fired. Mate, you did it. I know you did it. You're effing fired. And it was like it was like church rush fiction to start on a Sunday. And I was like, I'm not leaving. He's like, you need to leave. I said, I'm not leaving. And my two buddies like, don't leave us for church rush. That's the day I ain't leaving. Like, whatever. So I just kept on working. And nothing. They just didn't say nothing else after that. Like, and um, <laughs> got fired because we'd be, or they tried to, we'd be back there and it'd be kind of slow. And I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you what the most underrated snack is. Take a daggum chicken nugget, wrap it in a piece of cheese back there and just throw that in your mouth, son. Oh, my <laughs> God. Especially a uh, they like McDonald's ought to make that and through that and they eat back there, eat some of them. We're all back there chomping and they come back there and tried to fire us over that. I'm like, gosh, dang, dude. Like I just smart off to them all the time. This is this one dude, big, big fat dude named Lynn. I'm talking about big dude. Looked like, uh, I'm going to tell you who he looked like. Looked like, looked like Dan Patrick, the star off the freaking, <laughs> uh, I'm, so Patrick, the star come back there my other one day and I got smart, cussed him a little bit, whatever. And tried to fire me then. Well, what I fi- finally got fired for was, listen, I gave them a fishing schedule. I was on, you know, these are, and they said I'd take off from a tournament. Well, the dadgum regional managers on me about coming in Saturday. Asked me like 10 times. I told them, no, I got to fish. And, okay, well, Saturday comes, and I finally said, yeah. And guess what? My ass wasn't there. I was fishing. Like, and so that's what I finally got fired. Of course, not coming in and open on Saturday, and I was at a fishing tournament. I did not give a shit. <laughs> and you were in, you were 16 at the time? 16, yeah. Uh, 17, but I did not care. Can you imagine the that choking job? lady? The lady choking <laughs> the, the on the la- fucking hamburger just cracks <laughs> she, me up. She takes a bite of it. I, I'll tell you what else we used to do working at McDonald's is me and my buddies would like somebody come in and it was like a contest who could get more patties out on like a Big Mac or something like out and the managers and them, you know, the people up front would grab it, put it on the tray or put it in the bag. And like about the max amount of patties that you can put on a burger and get it through is seven patties. Like I tried nine before, but they grabbed the box and then it's so heavy. But and you think, oh, there's not a difference between seven to nine patties. Well, guess what? There is because we could slide out no problem. You get eight or nine, and bam, they'd open a box and be like, what the F is this, you know? <laughs> and So you gave seven – some people got a Big Mac with seven <laughs> with patties. With seven patties. Oh, especially whenever one of our buddies would come in out front, like when somebody we went to school with, like, oh, yeah, we're going to load this thing up. <laughs> yeah, so, like five patties is a no-brainer. Like, that's easy work. But you, you want to smoke – like if somebody smuggles nine patties out on a Big Mac or something, they did something. <laughs> Could you imagine eating, you just being a random guy, and he's like, God, this is the best Big Mac, thickest some bitch I've ever had, Mom. And then you go to the next one or piss. Well, hey, the one up the road, they gave me nine patties. You only got 
What's it normally have? Just two on there? Two, right? Got two patties. Two patties, and it's got like a, a bun in the middle, right? Yeah, yeah, the bun in the middle. But we'd usually leave the bun in the middle out. That way we can fit more patties in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Uh, so that's a two and a half pound burger. Because oh, those are yeah, a quarter. Nice. Right, a quarter of a pound I, I per deal? I really don't even have a clue. <laughs> All I know is stick nine patties on the thing, hit the button, it comes down and fries the patties. You get up one shake piece of meat and throw it in a tray. <laughs> <laughs> this is... This is, I mean, this is twenty year old experience. This here. is, yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what's your, what's your? Do you go to McDonald's anymore? No, not too often, man. I'll, th- I'll roll there every once in a while. And I gotta tell you, I'm pretty simple. I usually just get me a uh, single cheeseburger with some pickle and mustard on her. That's it. Number I, number three. I number like six. The, I like I think the quarter six. pounder because the quarter pounder that's that's fresh meat, right? Well, buddy, if you believe that, I mean... If you believe that. That's when they cook right there, supposedly. Yeah, they have to cook it right there. They have to cook it to order, is what, I, is what yeah. I'm getting at. I got you. That'd yeah. be hard. Yeah, so if you go to McDonald's, get the Quarter Pounder. I say get, the, right. ch- get the chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets are good. Oh, yeah. Actually, the yeah. best thing McDonald's has is their tea. Their sweet tea, because you can go up north and get good sweet tea. The tea and the french fries. Yes, but you, I mean, I don't give a shit if you're in Washington State or Maine. If you go to McDonald's, you can get sweet tea, and it's like being in the South. You travel all oh, the time. That, and I'm assuming you're a tea drinker. Oh yeah, I drink tea. Don't that wear tea. you out oh. up north when you can't get it? Oh yeah, dude. And if you do get it, it sucks. Like yes. it's like dirty water. Yeah. How hard is it to fucking boil water in a tea bag and throw sugar in it? I've never understood why it's so hard to figure that concept out. Well, obviously, for Northerners, it's effing rocket science. <laughs> <laughs> they can't do it. Yeah, I've never, never have gotten that. I hate when you go tea. Now, do you want Earl Grey? No, I don't want fucking hot tea. I drink hot tea in the morning. I do like it, but I don't want Earl Grey. I want some Lipton fucking tea or Louisiana tea, water, and some sugar. And that's all I want. That's it. Not hard to do. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So wh- I'll tell you what. Go ahead. I did that. McDonald's too. It's just a double as a McDouble, and you don't get get it plain, and then get some barbecue sauce that you get chicken nuggets and slam that on there, buddy. Let me tell you something. Mm. Mm, I have tried that. Have you done In and Out, the In and Out Burger? Yeah, I've done the In and Out Burger, and I'll be honest with you, like I think it's all right. I just don't think it's all cooked up to what it is. You know, everybody makes it out to be, but maybe that's just me. What about Water Burger? I like the Whataburger now. I really do. Mm. Whataburger's not as good as it used to be. When they got bought by the company in Chicago, they Yankeeized it or something. Yeah. It's, not, it's just not the same as it used to fucking be back in the old days when it was when the meat, the cheese, and everything was one food group and globby, greasy hamburger. It was a damn good hamburger, like you find yeah. in the little little town's hamburger shack. Oh yeah. But I'm not an in and out guy either. Andy thinks it I'm is. Gonna, their best parts their fries. I'm gonna take no, their uh, fries are awful. You gotta get animal style fries if you're gonna get fries at Whataburger or uh In N Out. I'm going to rank the fast food joints. It is it is In N Out, it is Culver's, it is McDonald's, and then it is Whataburger. Oof. Wow. I am out on the Whataburger. You're really looking like an idiot today when you put McDonald's over Whataburger. Telling you those quarter pounders. Now yeah. Culver's is good though. I do like Culver's. Culver's is solid, man, and that damn ice cream and uh, custard. Mm. Yes, I think so. that I think the ice cream and all that stuff uh, is the reason people go to Culver's. I like the cheese curds also because we don't get cheese curds a lot down here, and when you do, you know, stay away from cheese curds in in Texas. But I like yeah. the curds at Culver's. Shit, my son smashes smashes cheese curds. Mm-hmm. Dairy Queen's good cheese curds. See, our Dairy Queens don't have cheese curds. We got tacos. <clears throat> yeah, tacos at Dairy Queen. Fuck yeah, that's Stay away great. From it's them. a Texas. Stay away no, they're from good. Them, though. Stay away from them. And nachos at Dairy Queen. The not d- not oh. Dairy Queen nachos are the best nachos in the United States. Plain yeah. old drive-in theater cheese and fresh jalapenos on them. Oh, they're excellent. No, no, you do not go to Dairy Queen and get tacos or nachos. Yes, but yes, you do. No, gravy in the morning or a cheeseburger. <laughs> do Do y'all not have at your, at your Dairy Queen? Do y'all have uh, the DQ dude, the chicken fried steak sandwich? 
Yeah, but I hadn't had it. They're, they're, it's good. I'm out on Dairy Queen. Well, I'm not a big Dairy Queen eater, but it's better than... Well, y'all are going out to eat with each other very much from what I can tell. <laughs> when we do go out yeah. to eat, we have one common denominator every time. What is that, Andy? What's that? What's that? I pay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Don't know if it doesn't matter if it's just me and Andy or the whole fucking family, but I still get the tip. Andy actually loses my fucking credit card at that DFW airport after I pay. That's how bad it is sometimes. I did. Buddy, I lost my debit card this weekend uh, up in Michigan at a wedding. Did they give it back or are you still still missing? Uh, somebody tried to charge something on it and then they shut it off. But yeah. What was the charge? I don't remember. Wasn't it like a okay. sex shop or anything? Uh, now, I wasn't a sex shop. It's some type of food place. I don't even remember what they called it. So, um, tell me, what's the weird? What's the weirdest, wildest shit that happened this year on tour? I don't know, man. Probably, I felt like I was going to die on the St. Lawrence River the first day of the tournament. Like, I mean, I wish it was a wild, crazy story, like off the water, I could tell you. But, dude, like... The wind was blowing 25, 30, probably 25 mile an hour, maybe 30, out on Lake Ontario. And I was running about 65 miles. And I made the long run. took me about two, two and a half hours to get there. Well, the wind picked up even more. And on my way back, like, I had to cut across. I, had to, I couldn't run the bank all the way. I had to cut, cut out into the lake. And, dude, I was in the biggest waves you ever seen. Like, when, dude. I was going down a wave. Like, I'm not talking about just like a little wave. I'm going down a wave, and the top of it crested behind me, and it come down and crested and come down on the back of my boat over the motor. Like, my motor's like, rrr, rrr, rrr. I thought my motor was going to die. It fills up half my boat of water from the back, not water coming over the front, from the back of the boat. And my bilge pump's on, my boat's half full of water, 10, 12 foot waves. Like, people think I'm exaggerating. I'm pretty sure they was, they was over 10 footers. Like, whenever a wave comes down on the back of your boat, like a surfer wave, like, you got a problem. <laughs> like, and there was, and I had to go about six, eight miles in this stuff. And that whole time, dude, I'm telling you, I didn't know if I was going to make it back. I was like, here we go. This is it. All right. We we're gonna drown. We're gonna drown in fucking Lake Ontario. Now, where did y'all put in at Lake Ontario? Uh, we put in at Clayton. I wonder where that's at because that's about uh, where we're, we're we're gonna. It's about fifteen minutes from the mouth of the river into the lake. We were on the St. Lawrence, right? Whenever we went to yeah the Millionaire's Row or whatever. Thousand yeah, Islands. we were in Thousand Islands. Yeah, yeah, that's that's where it's at. Thousand Islands is Clayton. Oh, okay. So you were right there then. Yeah, that's where we went out of downtown Clayton on the water. I think now that I'm thinking about, it, I think Clayton oh. is the town that we were in. No, 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 no. We were when we ate dinner at that um, that Irish restaurant. Yeah, we were close to there because I'm looking at it right now on the map. It's right by Alex. Well, we went in at Alexandria Irish. Bay is where we were at. Hey, hey, that's the spot up there, man. I mean, Clayton's all right, but if you want to go out and have a good time, Alexandria Bay is the place. And let me tell you something. You need to go get you some wine slushies because me, Caleb Summerall, and Lee Livesey last year, we went out there. We went back up there for a few days, and it was crappy weather, rain and wind blowing. We wasn't going out. And we was up there. We went to this little place and eat some lunch. And they had a bar there, and we was sitting there having a drink. And we was all three just sitting there looking up there at this slushy machine spinning. I was like, what the hell is that in a bar? Like, So I asked them, I said, what is that? And she said, oh, that's wine slushies. I was like, shit let me try one of them and they grabbed the wine slushy set her down in front of me and i drank two of them things about couldn't even talk walking out of there <laughs> after that i want hard to take many wine slushies what, what? didn't jesse have those when she was at her mom i thought had a wine slushy somewhere her mom you know jesse or mom your mother my wife uh i don't i think mom just had a chardonnay i don't think she had a slushy. anyways one. when we go up to hunt we're going to st lawrence outfitters that's what we were talking about you earlier, and I'm going to outfish you if you come up with us, and that would be quite the story. All right. Is there any? There's no chance that Jeff's going to outfish you, right? No. Like there's like no offense, <laughs> but there's no chance, not a shot at all. Yeah. You would cut the line before you let Jeff outfish you. Like we would just go in. Um. 
Yeah, I would. I would put. I would cut your line, buddy. I would do something where you would not. If I did outfish you, do you think I would talk shit about it for a long time? If you outfish me, I'd never (laughs) hear the end of it. You talk shit text every day, like, and then you'd probably skip four or five days, and I think it was over, and then I'd get another. (laughs) Um. So what is the, so what is the rules? So we we had a fishing trip and we kind of had some discrepancies on on the rules. It's is it is it boat is it catches or is it fish that you get in the boat? Let let, let me set this the deal first. We were offshore at Venice and we were fishing. <laughs> and we counted how many fish that you caught. We didn't say anything about fucking boats, but I started just real. I'm telling you, I'm sacking them in. I look like freaking Moses feeding the herd with I'm catching so many fish. And Dirk and Andy come up. Oh, no, no. It only counts if you have a keeper. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. I was wanting well, to catch I- small fish. Fish a fish. No. I got to be 15, like up there. Well, really on the St. Lawrence, a keeper is only 12 inches, I think. So. Right, Jeff was just counting like, oh, I, I reeled the fish in, we threw it back, that counts. Where I was like, it's got to be in the boat. I caught 110 fish between Dirk and Andy, they caught 73. No. But how big was I didn't want to catch big ones, I wanted to catch for speed. I didn't want, nothing. I was going to fight for 15 minutes, man. I was, I was thinking through this as I needed to catch as many fish as possible. No, 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 no. That's not how this works. <laughs> no. Only for, yeah, that's like measuring little peckers, buddy. Like, it just don't work. <laughs> it's about who catches the bigger ones. That's, that's kind of what I thought. But Jeff was trying to finagle the rules. and Well, be- before we go to St. Lawrence Outfitters to hunt and fish, we're going to have to sit down over a wine slush and go through the rules. Cause, we will establish Yes, rules. see, they were trying to change them on me. Now, Dirk, he's an honest guy. I trust Dirk with my life. Andy? Andy's oh, yeah. all about trying to finagle me on any kind of deal, always. You were trying to fuck me on that deal. How? By catching little a bunch of little fish. It's got to be in the boat. That's not the the rule. Was who caught the most fish? See, now, see in what that, I'm fucking dealing in that with that conversation. Here? Who caught the most fish? It never said who caught the most fish. That are keepers. It was who caught the most fish. I bet you he always shot the most <laughs> ducks and geese. Yeah. All no, the time. Was, uh, no, because he was duck. Yeah. They fell on my side. All the time. No, because I don't want to clean them. Fix that right there. <laughs> yeah, he, he'll he he'll fuck you, Matt, if you're not careful. I got to fix that. That's what I'm figuring out. Yeah, I don't I not, I not don't ever claim shit. I, I learned my lesson. I taught a lesson a long time ago. I had a preacher that hunted with me that claimed everything. He'd bring eight or ten guys from his church. They'd shoot a bunch of birds. He claimed, he was, instead of, Pastor Dave, he should have been pastor. I killed every fucking thing that flies. So our limit was a five bird limit, and he claimed six birds in the first two flocks that come down. So I walked in, up in front of him, in, in front of everybody in the group. And I said, "Hey, go ahead and unload your gun." He's like, "Huh?" I said, "Well, you got your limit already. Let these guys shoot." The next trip he came on, Pastor Dave never said a fucking word about shooting a bird. He learned his lesson. Yep. I'm telling you, like I don't ever shoot nothing. Yeah. Dismiss every time. I like I like burning powder. Yep. <laughs> Me too. Are you still shooting the Mossberg? Oh yeah, still shooting the Mossberg. Yep, 940. And uh it is a machine. Are you still shooting like underneath your armpit? This was something I picked yeah, up yeah. from you. Yeah, yeah. Shooting the gun a little lower with and I had the stock right under my chin, shooting, you know, straight up. And uh I said I don't shoot nothing, but uh I mean, whenever I pull the trigger, shit falls. So I don't know what. <laughs> now I am gonna outshoot your ass in Canada. Huh. That, that's that's huh. gonna happen. <laughs> okay, listen, 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 Dad. You better start practicing now, and you have a better shot at outfishing me than you do shooting. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna go two I, for O. Oh. I'm gonna be two and O oh on your ass while we're there. No, nah, I'm being dead. Like shooting, like I'm just yeah. When, when we leave there, you're gonna leave and say Whew. it ought to be illegal for them to let that fat guy even shoot a gun. It's too much danger to the birds. After I learned how to shoot with the stock under my, chin, I gotta watch that. It's like it's on you. It's not. No, it's unreal. Like I was out there and uh, I was out here in South Carolina with my buddy, and we went to this uh, this like sponsored uh, trap shooting event or whatever. 
and we were out there and there's this uh there's this uh this guy named Donnie and it was just two of us supposed to be four man team. Well we only had two for this last team and he just asked if he can come with us. And we was out there and we was shooting and I was you know, I was hitting a uh, eight or eight or nine out of ten birds and um or seven out of eight and I was tall and Donnie's like, try so I asked him, finally asked him, and he's he was a pro and he shot with the stock under his chin. And I asked him, I said, What is the deal with that? And he kind of showed me. He said, just try it on this next one. And I was like, all right. So I did it and didn't mess. And I just kept on doing it. And I was like, what the hell, man? Like, and here's the thing. If you do miss, like, instead of aiming, like, whenever your head's above the stock, you can see your shot. You can see your shot in the air. And if you, you adjust, that second shot's adjusted, and you will not miss the second one. Probably. I cannot wait I'm to sit to in a blind while you do this. I have never been around anyone that shot that way other than a little kid with a BB gun that's too tall. I, I'm And I'm not being a smart ass. I really want to see someone shoot oh. that way because I've never seen no one shoot that way. Is it on your TikTok? I'm trying to find it so I can show Jeff. It's on there. I was shooting clay pigeons in my backyard. Now, with the heavier loads, like the, the Boss War Chiefs, does it kick them much more with it not on your shoulder? What about the recoil? No, no. I don't feel it kick either way. Well, you're a big stout guy that's running marathons now. I'm not. And I'm shooting a 12-gauge, too. Like I did it with a uh, um, a 410 and a 20-gauge, and it's it's real easy with those. Like the 12 gauge, something bothered me. I'm going to shoot some dove this weekend. I'm going to try that and see. You're going to need something. Dude, for both eyes open, centered up, and you'll give it a little bit. You'll be amazed. I, um, the fuck can I, find I shoot both eyes open, anyways. I have since I was little, but I've never shot with the stock underneath. I don't need to know. I yeah, don't need no bad habits because I don't want any excuses when I come up there and kick your ass and you say, and I say, well, I would have really shot better if I'd have shot off my shoulder. I'm telling you, if you're say, if you're halfway center sided, you'll be you'll be like, holy crap! I'm gonna try that. That's interesting. I've never I've, I've never seen nobody shoot that way before. Did you not think the guy was off his rocker when you saw him do it the first time? Um, the very first few shots, I was like, what is this guy <laughs> yeah. doing? Like, and then he never missed. And dude, I, I'll be honest with you. So I think it was like a. The whole rounds is like a hundred, and I think he had an off day, but he shot at like an eighty-seven, and I shot like an eighty-five. Jesus, out of a hundred, I cannot find this fucking video. I'm gonna, look, I'll look it up later and it, see. It looks like uh, brown trees, and I'm on the left side with the gun and uh, skeet to the right. I, don't I remember seeing the video because I thought, "What the fuck is Maddie doing here?" And then you were hitting the targets, and I was like, "Well, whatever works for Maddie." I'm telling you. Listen, I would have never thought it either. I've never shot like that in my whole life. I've ne I've been around a lot of people with guns in my life, and I've never had any. I, my guides even would have come in and said, "You ain't gonna believe this. This fucker was shooting with a gun underneath his shoulder." That 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 is yeah, crazy. Oh, here it is, Jeff. So, so this like dude, he doesn't put it to his cheek. He just keeps it right underneath. So, yeah, you're not looking down the barrel. You are. You like you are, but your head's above it. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. That is a really interesting yeah. did deal. you were you uh did you do a lot of hunting at, when you were growing up? Yeah, dude, I've been banging all my life, never even hunting like this, and I shoot better now. I, I shoot I, I shoot better now than I ever have. Did uh on tour this year? Did y'all go to Cal? Did y'all go to the West Coast and fish at all? No, no. The furthest west we made it was uh really just Texas. We didn't really make it too far west. Where was the shittiest weather this year? St. Lawrence. Yeah, yeah, for sure, the St. Lawrence. It looked cold and miserable up there. What time of year did you yeah. do this? Uh, the St. Lawrence, hell, it wasn't it was like the middle of August. Yeah, it was a couple of weeks after we left up there. So a month yeah. or so ago? Mm-hmm. I saw, I watched the, I, I check on you every day. I always <laughs> check to see how you and Seth are doing. <laughs> yeah, we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a fine line on there because the other day you missed getting to fish on Sundays by like six ounces. I know, dude. Like it, I didn't even think there was a shot coming in that I'd have a shot to fish the final day. Like I figured I was going to come in 15 or 20th place. 
And then we're back at the hotel, and somebody's like, oh, or it's Chris's girlfriend, Catherine, one of the boys, Canadians we run with. He's like, she's like, oh, I saw where you barely missed the cut. And I'm like, what? And I get on there and look. I'm like, hey, it's, it's like eight ounces. I'm like, you got to be effing kidding me. Yeah. Like, you got to be kidding me. And I came back early, too. I was like, because I caught what I caught, and I was like, okay, I need to get back because of the weather. I should have stayed. I had another hour down there if I'd have stayed, and then then I'd have probably made it. But, but yeah, crazy. What were the camera guys saying whenever you were about to get fucking swept under on Lake Ontario? I didn't have nobody with me. I didn't have a camera guy or nothing with me at first. It was just you. It was just me. I was by myself, and that was even worse part. You and God. Well, I'll tell you what. If uh, you better be happy, who, who, listen, nobody wants. Be out there and see that. It'll try if I'd have had a marshal or a camera guy to change their life. <laughs> Get real religious, it, real quick. It changed my life for a half a for a half a day to a day. I ain't gonna lie to you. That afternoon, I was shook. Like I come into the weigh in, and listen, man, I, there was guys there that's been out on big waters with me, like big stuff. People wouldn't think about going out in, and I'm not back there. I'm like I'm physically shaking. I'm pale. Even the tournament director, Lisa, whenever I walked up on stage, like whenever she grabbed my fish, she looked at me. She's like, are you OK? I'm like, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause, I saw the line about an hour ago, but yeah. Because everybody's wanting that sound bite from Maddie whenever you get up on stage. Not that day. I didn't have from. I had nothing, dude. I was... I was thanking God to get back to the boat ramp. Unless anybody's ever been in a situation where they're by themselves and they're really worried that they really fucked up something, it's a tough. Yeah, Yeah, because that's the thing. There's nobody else to blame but you. And the whole time you're just like, well, fucking look what I did. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's you're out there and whenever you're in the, there ain't no turning around. You just, yeah, it was a long long boat ride how long you said it you had to go six to eight more miles in that kind of stuff how long did it take you to get there um so i ran south and like i could get i could hug the bank part of the way and it wasn't too terribly bad then but uh but whenever i got up and had to actually cut out towards a point and it's about eight mile stretch like but i don't know how i was doing seven to 11 mile an hour. And the thing is like, you'd have to go down the waves and then you get down, you'd have to kind of go up them, but you couldn't go like, it's weird because if the waves are so big and the problem is they're cresting Mm -hmm. like a surf wave. Like, and like you get up and if you did, like you would drop down straight down. And I'm talking about big waves. So how do you figure out, like, you know, you got, have you ever been on big water before you took this job? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I grew up on Kentucky Lake. I've been in six, eight footers, you know. I've been in some big stuff, and that was, like, on another level. Because I'm just thinking about the poor guy that's, like, never seen big water before, and now all of a sudden he's on the Bassmaster, and it's like, hey, this is where you're fishing, and there's got to be guys that get in trouble doing that, this. That lake is just like an ocean. Matter of fact, there's probably I, as many people in – Ontario Superior in Michigan that have died as there is most oceans around. The, I mean, there's a that is a dangerous, dangerous place. And that St. Lawrence River's got a terrible undertow or a big current, I guess, not undertow, big current, and it's big water. Yeah. My guy the third day was from South Carolina and he was a marshal and he went out. So I gave him fair warning. I said, listen, this is where we're going. The wind's supposed to blow again, blah, blah, blah. And he was good. And we're down there fishing and we're going up and down the waves fishing and stuff and the boat. And I'm like, it's rough down there. And I'm like, it's going to be brutal getting back. So that's why I left early. And and the worst water was down there where I was fishing. He's like, man, I ain't been in water like this. I was like, this ain't too bad, bud. Like, this is five footers here. This ain't bad. Like, we're going to, we can handle this. <laughs> Not very many people get seasick bass fishing. Oh, yeah, no, I'm like, I've had a couple boys out there. Lake Ontario will make you seasick. It's a big, so much. we stay, our house was on Lake Ontario, but when we were there, the weather was nice every day, but yeah. I've been up north. Matter of fact, when I was there last fall, we were in the, we were at Alexandria Bay last fall, and the wind was blowing out of the north about 30 miles an hour. 
Fucking lake yeah. looked just like it looked like just like looking at the Atlantic, the North Atlantic. I mean, it was churning and blowing and nasty. And those, yeah, those things get bad. Yeah, especially in that river. If you get the wind blowing against the current, it gets pretty rowdy. It is a pretty area up there. It is gorgeous. What's the biggest fish you caught this year? Um, I think I caught a seven at Santee, maybe. Probably Santee Cooper. I caught a seven, caught a bunch of sixes, caught a bunch of four-pound smallmouth this year. It's a big, bunch of four. That's a big, that's a big, what is the record on a smallmouth, the world record? Uh, the world record, I think it's 11 pounds, son. I could be wrong about that. Maybe 11 and three quarters. That's a big chunk right there. I'll see if I can oh, find it real I quick. Couldn't. I honestly, I have a little trouble believing it, but maybe that spring was a little off on that scale in the back in the day. I don't know. That's a magnum smallmouth. 1115 Dale yeah. Hollow Reservoir, Tennessee. Yeah, that's a big fish. I'll probably only catch one about nine or ten when we're up there when fishing with you, Maddie. Oh, you can catch some. You'll catch a five, some fives, sixes for sure. What was Seth telling us last time? Uh, Dotty was that the that was the record largemouth for a long time, but it was kind of a fucked up thing the way that. But the thing about Dotty is she was caught. She was actually caught twice in California. Uh, but in California, to keep a fish, you gotta it's got to be hooked in, inside the mouth. And both times she was caught, they hooked her outside the mouth. Oh, so she didn't count. No. So they, now, the world is actually out of Japan um, right now. I can't remember the, the name of the lake. Like any other time, I'd have been able to tell you. But the way the guy caught him, he saw these great big bass out there on a bridge piling. And he would get for... I think it was 30 days or something, 30 to 60 days. He'd go out there every day with these giant bluegills. And he'd throw all these giant bluegills by this bridge piling. And these giant bass would come up there and eat them. Well, he went out there one day with a live bluegill with a circle hook and stuck it in the back. And went out there and, and instead of feeding them, he threw that live bluegill out there. And that dude... Uh, that dude caught that world record bass. That shouldn't count, should it? Why? It's catching a fish. Yeah, but you're chumming. Yeah, it's... You're feeding them. You're fattening them up. What the fuck do you think you're doing anyways? You're throwing food to them to eat, whether it's artificial or not. That's what you're trying to do. Yeah, but like just throwing them here, that's like, that's like shooting a, a, a high fence deer almost. Oh, bullshit. You got them coming to this. You got to catch the fucking fish. Do you think it's... It... It's like, like baiting a wild deer. Yeah. Like it's going to... I don't know. That just seems kind of... So you wouldn't shoot a deer over a feeder, Maddie? I have shot deer over <laughs> corn piles for a long time. That's, that's common. That's what I'm saying. So you would... that? Do you have a problem with him catching a fish with a bluegill? Not like that. Feeding them. Like, well, he, he set them up for a long... He put... The, I mean, there, not many people's going to go through that much work, you know, but... Uh, listen, man... Uh, Rather you catch it on live bait or artificial. I'd rather see the world record caught on artificial, but um, but technically it wasn't illegal. You can leave, you can use live bait here, you know, catch it on a big shiner or a minnow. They shiner fish in Florida. Um, no, I ain't got no problem with it. What what did that fish weigh? Twenty five pounds. Dottie Dotty uh, weighed twenty five one. I think this was like twenty three or twenty four. Maybe 24 and change, if I remember right. I can't, I, I can picture the Japanese guys, Japanese guys' face in my head. I can't, I can't remember his name. That's a big ass fish. God almighty. Yeah, he said the bigger ones missed it. I wonder how, what the, there's not very many places that are going to have a 20 pound bass. No, not very many places got 20 something pound bass. Like in California, they used to stock the trout, and that's where people catch 20, like, a little lake I grew up fishing on, like whenever I was real young, uh, Miramar Lake. I think it holds half the top ten records in the world, or the top half the top twenty records, or something like that. Um, it's a little, it's five miles around, and they used to stock like forty thousand pounds of trout in it a year. And dude, I'm telling you, like them South California lakes used to hold them, but uh, uh, PETA stopped stopped. Uh, the state from stocking trout for like seven or eight years 
and they're stocking trout in the lakes, but instead of putting like 40,000 pounds of trout in the lake, they're only putting like 1,500 pounds in a lake. And those trout's what grew the big bass. Why does PETA want to stop that? Do they think it's them fish don't eat each other anytime? I don't know, buddy. I don't know. The guy, the one in Japan, 22.5, Mana, Manabu. Oh, I can't wait to see you. Kurita. That's probably pretty close. So that was him. And then the other one was in Georgia, I think I read. What's your favorite tournament you fished this year? Um, Man, I really liked in Northern Smallmouth Lakes. But other than that, I have to say uh, Santee Cooper, because I was catching them on a big swim bait in the top water. And, man, that's that's my zone. I like throwing big baits and top water and catching great big bass. What uh, what's the what's the funnest one that you go to? Is it always like just the bass mash, the the classic? Like, is that always the one that has kind of the uh, most fun surrounding the tournament? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's the classic's always the funnest. But like the pro, like the problem with the classic is people don't realize how busy we are. Like the classics on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but the weekend before, like we practice Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then we're off on Monday, and then. Um, then we're off on Tuesday, but we got some obligations to do on, on those days, uh, especially on Tuesday. And then we practice again on Wednesday. And then we have a big, that big dinner where I get dolled up better than anybody that Wednesday night. Thursday's an off day with media and media day. So we're doing media all day and we like, it's all. And then we fish the tournament the next three days. It's just like, it is fun, but, but God, is it busy. Yeah. And next next year it's in Tulsa, right? Yeah, yeah. It's at Grand Lake and that's in Tulsa. The only thing bad about it, and I, I haven't been there, but I was told that um see we fish Grand Lake. All right, but the weigh in is in Tulsa. So I, but the problem with that is it's it's ninety miles away. Damn. So we're gonna weigh in at whatever time i'm i guess three o'clock and then we got to drive 90 miles and i heard there's crap load of traffic and i heard it sucks balls and so we got to drive out drive all the way to the way and go through that and then they're like it's going to be some long days that logistics doesn't even make sense it doesn't make sense but that's what i was told by a pretty good source because they've had it there a couple times uh but whatever man like if that's where they want it that's where they want it i don't understand why they would do it that way like yeah, I'm looking at it now, and it, it's fucking. Well, you just got that that venue to hold all the people. You know, they don't have a lake right there. It, well, Tulsa's got the Arkansas River runs. I don't know how deep it is though. The what? Arkansas or Arkansas River? Excuse me. Depends where you're at. They they don't know what the fucking name of it is either. What do you call it, Maddie? Oh, uh, it's huh? Arkansas. Arkansas. Yeah, but I think they call it the Arkansas River. They're wrong. Well, you tell they, them that. They've there's, been wrong there's, a long there's time. There's Arkansas City in, in uh, right there, so are they wrong, too? Do what, Maddie? That's not be worth the crap. Well, <laughs> you'd think, though, we, of all the places in the country that's got water and uh, hotels and stuff, you'd think that they wouldn't make you drive 90 fucking miles across Oklahoma. It's a long enough day whenever we was in Knoxville and everything was two miles apart. So, so you're going to weigh in at the lake, but then you got to drive. Well, yeah, we, they check our fish at the lake whenever we're done, but then we got to drive all the way to Tulsa to weigh in. Yeah. And I'm betting you're going to, I don't know. So the fish are going to have to ride 90 miles before they get weighed in. No, I mean, no, um, yeah, they got to ride 90 miles. Do they have to be alive when you get to Tulsa? They, they check the fish whenever we load the boats up. They verify and all that stuff and then we hit the road you'll be uh you'll be fishing right by where zach bryan got arrested Venita, oklahoma did you see that really yeah yeah that's where uh, i guess he he was going he was driving to boston and he was with his security guy he got pulled his security guy got pulled over so he loops back around to see what's taking so long and then i guess he got lippy with the cop and they put his ass in jail Freaking dumb ass. That's the second time he's done that, too. Zach Bryan? Yeah, I think he thinks he's a little bit more than he is. I don't know. Uh, that motherfucker can sing, though. Yeah. What do you listen to before you on, on the way to your tournament? You got your jams? Uh, Yeah. What are they? You seem a little... 
Well, it's just kind of funny. <laughs> let, let, uh, let us guess. Hold on. Let us guess. <clears throat> Get a hint. Are we going old school, new mu- music? What are we talking? Um, uh, one of them's a little older. And he had, I'll give you a guess. He had cornrows. And, uh, kind of cornrows. Kind of. Depends Snoop on Dog? It's, is it Snoop? Uh, no, no, no. Like I ain't, I ain't down with the corn row game. So uh, I can... uh, exhibit. I don't even know who the fuck uh, that is. Well, a little uh, older than Exhibit. Oh. Ludicrous. Not older than so that. we're talking like motherfucker. Beastie Boys. No, nah, he didn't have corn rows. Uh, Eminem. Who? Julio. Coolio. 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 He's dead now. God rest his soul. Yeah. What, was, what, was what are you listening song? to? Gangster in Paradise? Gangsters? Yeah, yeah. Gangsters Paradise. And uh, the other ones are newer. No, Taylor newer. Swift. I know, y'all. Huh. Yeah, how, how'd you know? <laughs> I could tell. Y'all got the same hair. No, not Taylor okay. Swift. Newer. Uh, is it in the same genre as Coolio? Is it rap? Uh, yeah, yeah, Post Malone. Right. Like, no offense against Post Malone people. But I'm not, not a fan, fan of Post Malone. I feel like I think he's a, he's a unique artist, but I'm just not a I don't even know who he guy. is, so. Uh, okay, so it's not Post Malone, but it's newer. I don't know a whole lot of new music. Uh, uh, what's the dude's name that's a devil washer? Because Payne was listening to his ass the other day. Uh, uh, once married to one of the Kardashians. Chris something or another? Kanye? No, 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 no. The guy that's got, he's a black guy, and he's a rap singer, I guess. And he's, Kanye? No, it's not Kanye. It's the other Kardashians. Got a kid with him or something. Oh, well, not Travis very, Scott. Not oh, Travis either. Scott. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard some of Travis Scott's music. Ain't he a devil guy, guy, supposedly? I, fuck, I don't know. I think Jeff. he supposedly is. I don't know what he does in his free time. I, I don't know. You stumped me on this new one. Uh-huh. Couple young golf songs. Young Dolph. I don't. I think, see, last year I was listening to Matchbox Twenty, uh, the song "Smooth," and then uh, the uh, every I'd only listened to these two songs before the tournament was Matchbox Twenty, "Smooth," and "Jewel Save My Soul." I know it's two totally off the wall things, but those are my jams on the way to a tournament. And and then this year, play two young golf songs and "Gangsters Paradise." Gangsters fucking paradise. Um. Yeah, I like that you laughed at Taylor Swift, but you're rocking the jewel, so that's nice of you. A banger, freaking Taylor Swift! I got nothing. Do you uh, do you do you <laughs> follow Britney Spears on Instagram? Um, yeah. Well, I don't know if I follow her, but I've looked at the, her crazy. That bitch videos. is nuts. I'm telling you, fucking fifty one fifty psycho crazy. Yeah. You don't want that waking up beside you. <laughs> no. Shit. Or, you know, up with that standing over you. I mean, good Lord, dude. You know somebody out there, like, when they got to be with Britney Spears, they were like, fuck it. Like her new husband. I think he was just like a, a fitness guy. S- soon to be ex. Yeah. Lands Britney Spears. That's like landing Dottie, you know, the right way instead of snagging her. Like, you got Britney Spears. You've got, you're living in a mansion. You got all the money that you can spend. And then you're like a year in, and you're like, "This bitch is just fucking off the wall." You're gonna make it a year in, like three days in. I would be questioning my own decision making. Like, I'd give somebody the power if I lasted three days with Britney Spears. I'd give somebody the power of attorney over <laughs> me. You know, she. It don't matter how many private jets and how many times she ships off to her house in Hawaii and takes you with her. That bitch is cray, cray, crazy. And she's not even that good looking no more. She looks like a fucking Greyhound bus stop chick is what she looks like. Yeah. Back in the day, she was hot. but Yeah, she's not that oops, I did it again bullshit. Oops, you did it too many times is what she should be called now. Yeah, I don't Mm -hmm. want no part of that. Who do you think, who, uh, when they were both at their peak, were you a Britney guy or Christina Aguilera? Oh, but... 
I got to say, they both might have had my heart at one time, but I have to go with Christina Aguilera. My, uh, Aguilera. What, what about... Yeah, she's she's kind of got that... She kind of had that... Uh, Brittany had this innocent girl vibe, and Christina Aguilera had, uh, you know, you get with me and you're in for the night. You're, you're going to need to hang on. What What about Kelly Pickler when she first came out? I don't know. I'm not really a Kelly Pickler guy. What about the chick that's on the Big Bang Theory? Uh, Kaylee Cuckoo or whatever that Cuckoo or what the hell is this? I don't even know who that is. She's a good looking blonde too. I don't even know who that is. I'll I'll send you a picture of her. She's good looking. Yeah, she used to be really good looking. Margot Robbie. I don't know who that is, buddy. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. I don't know who too many celebrities <clears throat> is. That's one thing I learned. Madonna when she was young. Uh yeah, Madonna. She was pretty wild. Yeah, back when she was a boy was toy, a, when I, I was, was in a. high school, she was a smoke show. I never was a Madonna fan. She always had fucked up teeth. Nobody ever looked at her teeth. I do. I pay attention to these things. I'm trying to find a, a good picture of the Big Bang Theory girl. She's good looking. I wouldn't kick her. Andy, two things, teeth and In-N-Out burgers, obviously. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I care about. Will she go to In-N-Out? And does she have good, good looking teeth? Britney Spears probably do a lot of In-N-Out. Hey, <laughs> don't talk about my girl like that. All right, I found one. I'm going to send it to you. Uh, there now, you are. You're, you're, a, you're a football fan, right, Maddie? Yeah, yeah, I watched some football. I jacked it up every once in a while, but I do watch some football. What would you think about Texas Jack beating Alabama? He's looking at, He's looking Kaylee at Kaylee Kukoc. Girl. How do you say her last name? Cuckoo? Or? I don't know. I've never pronounced it. Always the Big Bang chick. The Big oh, Bang yeah. Theory chick. Yeah. Oh, hell. How do I get back on this Skype call? <laughs> there. <laughs> there, there you go. <laughs> but, hell, you know, a guy yeah. like Maddie, you're, you know, that your DMs probably got better than that. Um, No, not really. Not really. The DMs kind of slowed up a little bit. And, uh, yeah. Do they? I think a lot, man. I got me a I got me a sharp looking woman now. You do, yes, yes. I no, there's no <laughs> doubt about that. I still can. I will never forget that conversation I had with those parents who were trying to set you up with their high school daughter. Oh, I I just oh, could not get over that. Dude, I forgot about that till you just said that. <laughs> I ain't never. You know they messaged me after after the after the show about that. Why? Like they thought. Like, uh, yeah, we were just, I don't know, they was trying to defend herself a little bit. And I said, oh my gosh, come on, man. Like, like there were people that heard what y'all said. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people heard what y'all said. Like, no, there's no defending that. Sorry. No. I, I laughed so hard. I, I had to defend herself. They like, but you know, if you still want to come out, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> We were just joking, but if you wanted to do it, yeah. by all means. That's how. That was the weirdest thing ever. I forgot about that. What, when I'm telling you, the girl was there, and she's a pretty girl and stuff. And I thought, I was like, well, you know, do you, are you in college? What are you doing? Oh, I'm a senior in high school. I'm like, well, hold on. You're telling me you're yeah. trying to set your 18 year old high school senior daughter up <laughs> with a grown ass man? It's kind of like what's that? Yeah. What's that movie? Old school, where you know he gets the younger girl, and he's, she's like, "Well, how old are you? I'm a junior in college. No, in high school. Like, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> and it's the boss's daughter. Yeah. They can't make movies like that anymore. I wish they could. I like getting so much trouble. That was a banger of a movie, though. That was Frank the Tank. Frank the fucking oh, Tank. Yeah. yeah, they don't make. I wish they could do movies like that. Those were the those were the good old. Days. I don't know why they can't because people would watch them. Nah, I, I, I don't know. Just like well, I would watch them. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right up my alley. But like you'd have to cut out that part. Well, it'd be no fun. It's like Blazing Saddles. They took all that shit out. Blazing Saddles would be three minutes long. Mm hmm. I don't know. Um. So what are you doing this off season? Are you hunting a lot, or are you just kind of taking it easy? Back and forth with the girlfriend? Uh, easy. I've been taking it easy the last couple of weeks. Um, I'm going to Missouri, I guess, this week. And I got to go do a few things around the house, and I'll be back in the Carolinas for a couple of weeks. And I might got a um, couple of short hunting trips lined up. Not no, you know, bangers, but 
I got my mom make a trip up to Maine to my buddies up there. We're going to fish for four or five days and maybe do some partridge hunting. And yeah, I enjoy doing that. I've never been partridge hunting. Uh, you basically just drive around. That's it. And uh, see them and then you pass them up and then you get out and you walk around and then you crack them and they're good eating. They are good eating. What do they taste like? Chicken. Yeah, kind of like a little chicken. Um, what the heck is that? You know, like a there ain't but this big, right? And they Cornish like game hen. Like little, yeah, Cornish hen is what they're like. How many can you shoot in a day? I don't remember. I would guess shoot, three. shoot until he tells you to stop. No, uh, no. I think we killed six or seven last time. But the best part is, like, we're out there. Some of my buddy up there. We go on this. Uh, he owns this property, and we get on this. Uh, let's like a one lane road, like a like a logging road. And dude, whenever I tell you, we're twenty five miles, and I'm telling you, it's one of the prettiest views. It's desolate. You're out there with the moose and everything, and like that, like we ain't passed a house, a road, or nothing. Logging road, twenty five miles in the middle of nowhere, up towards Quebec. It's wild. Have would have you ever? Would you shoot a moose? Uh, yeah, I've, I've put in for the uh, the moose draw up there in Maine the last three or four years, and I got Drew. But yeah, um, my buddy up there, his wife's brother's actually like uh, this big famous moose caller. He'll call them in, like you'll see the YouTube videos. He'll, he's the one who calls them in, and will you know jump around and smack them on the ass and stuff like that, Oof. like crazy. But yeah, I got the, I got the hookup if I can draw a daggum tag. That's the best eating animal there is outside of beef. Really? I think so. I, have you had moose? No, I never had it. It's really good. That guy needs to quit slapping them on the ass and start shooting some and giving you some meat. There ain't no doubt. Dude, I'm serious. Like, I'd love to try one. Love to try one. It's, it's really good eating. And that's a beautiful. Maine is a beautiful state. It is. It's a little thick vegetation, but it is a beautiful state. He keeps trying to get me to come up there and go snowmobiling in the spring, and I'm like, let me tell you what's not happening. <laughs> it's not going anywhere, ever, that it's cold enough that the lakes freeze, and it's cold enough to drive a truck over those uh, on that ice over lake. Like, I'm not going there. Like, that don't have funerals up there in the wintertime because the dam is too cold, the ground's too hard. They... If somebody passes away in the wintertime, like in December, January, the funeral ain't till the summertime because <laughs> it grows eight foot deep. Not doing that. Have you, have you ever ice fished? No, not doing that either. I, but dude, I have hearts and feelings, especially this year, because I had a bunch of people saying I need to come up and go ice fishing. I'm like, no. And this dude's like, come on, man, you got to try it. That's how them Canadians are so good at catching smallmouth. I said, dude, I am not going anywhere. That it's cold enough to go out on the ice. Like, it's, I'm not that dumb. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not going where it's not freezing to where it's balls ass cold to stick a little tiny rod through the ice. No, it's not happening. I, oh, well, you, man, all your buddies get together and just drink. Well, guess what? I can do that right outside here, outside a fire outside my house in 60 degree yeah. weather. I did it one time. Me and Michelle went up to northern Minnesota and Bailey Christian Felix took us out. And I really enjoyed it. It was different, but it was like being in a camper. I wasn't sitting on a fucking bucket frozen, freezing, but he asked me this, and I'll never forget this. He goes, now, you've driven on a frozen lake before. Well, fuck no, I'm in West Texas. We don't drive on frozen lakes. You know, shit no. And it was, they had a trail. I got, a guy had taken a, I guess a, I don't even know what you'd hell you'd call it, just to clear it, clear, the, clear the roads. Just a back, not a back, what am I thinking? A road, road grader. grader. Had a road grader and had cleared yeah. road from the, the lodge right out in this lake, and they had little cones and stuff stuck out, and you drive it, and, it's just crazy to park your fucking vehicle on it, but it was it, it was something to do. I, I'm glad I did it and said I did it. It's not something I think I'll probably ever do, ever do again. But I'm like you. If you want to drink beer, just start you a bonfire and drink beer there, dude. Jeff, the fact that you don't want to go do it again tells me everything I yeah. need to know. Well, it was just kind of it's kind of boring. Catch and you didn't even enjoy no. that. Have you uh? Have you ever fished in a crappie house though in the wintertime? No. I'm that's not, that's no. on a dock. 
Like in Texas, we have Bobby. crappie houses. It's a house. The floors go out, and you can fish right there. I've done that before. That's a lot of fun. It's like fishing. I like my. That might be okay. Yeah, it's just they like you'll you'll have a the dock will go out in the wall like the pier goes out and they'll have a house on it and they'll have trap doors on it and you sit there and they'll have a wood burning stove and sit in a recliner and you're fishing in the lake just with bait and stuff over. A lot of times they'll throw Christmas trees and stuff under the dock and build structure and those crappie will come up. I've had some good times doing that. I can do all right, but that mean as the fact there's not ice underneath. <laughs> no, you're you're on. You walk from the house down the pier and you're fishing. Yeah, yeah, I can do You're that. You're all about fitness now. Have you done the ice bath challenge yet? No. Am I doing that? No, I take hours now, though. The ice bath challenge wouldn't bother me, I don't think. You you do the cold shower? How long are you staying in there for? Just went however long. It don't even bother me. I'll just get in. I, it'll, I'll make it as cold as I can. See, that's like in Texas right now. It's been so hot. It's finally cooled off a little bit. But like, even when you push it all the way to cold, it's still kind of warm. So I'm going to I'm gonna try to do it this winter, but whenever that ground starts to I get I thought colder, you were doing it in your backyard. Uh-uh. I thought you did the ice bath challenge in your backyard. No. I, oh. would, I, would, I would feel the bath. That was when the fucking water coming out of the spigot was cold enough. Oh, I thought you were taking ice baths. I, no, I would put ice. I would, in my bathtub, I'd put it on cold water, fill it up, and then I'd put ice in it. Okay, well, that's ice bath. Well, yeah, but I didn't have a setup uh-huh. on, in my backyard. I took an ice bath when we were in Ontario. I got out in the water one time. It's pretty yeah. nippy. Oh. Dude. Yeah, I just don't think it'd be that bad. My uh, grandkids loved it, though. They were all excited about taking no, a bath. No, he's talking about the ice bath. Like, 37 degrees is pretty chilly. To me... I did enjoy my underwear uh, out in Montana in the snow, and it was like, man. whatever. I mean, it was cold as <laughs> balls, but I got frostbite that day, but whatever. To my toenails were purple. Damn. To me, the shower seems harder because, like, when you when you finally get in the in the bath, everything kind of settles around you, and it you you start yeah. to get a little bit warmer. Your body obviously starts to heat up the water, but like the shower, it's just coming out. It stays cold. And that. Well, there's one thing that's in common with both of them, and that's shrinking. That is <laughs> yes. One. Oh yeah. And I don't have a whole lot to shrink, shrink already, so like it, it gets pretty embarrassing. I I got I have to tell my wife like, listen, just don't uh, don't even look at me. <laughs> look like a turtle head coming out of the shell. Well, <laughs> a turtle head that's in the shell. <laughs> I, it inverts itself. It like goes up to my belly button somehow. <laughs> so, <laughs> looks like a belly button. It does. Uh, you know, I'd be a great transgender candidate. It just goes right up, oh, right God. up in there. Don't, don't be poking that thinking. Don't be poking that thing thinking you're gonna get a woohoo like the Pillsbury <laughs> Doughboy. Uh, when did you start doing the the cold showers? Uh, a couple months ago. Um, like people think I'm crazy, but whatever. Like I'm. It don't even bother me now. No, like once you get used to it, it's not bad. So I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, that's my goal is to try to continue it through the winter. It wakes yeah, you up yeah. though. It will that. There ain't no like doubt. You're fucking wide It'll awake. Perk you up. It'll perk you. And up. they say it's good for like burning fat and all sorts of good stuff. That's what I hear. I don't know about that. I think it's pretty minute, but yeah, whatever they say, it's good for you. I just did it. I'll, I'll tell you, I ain't gonna lie. I'd get out here running in this heat. And I'd come in, and I'd be like, all right, I need to, uh, like, cool down. I was like, so I just hopped in the cold shower. Like, yeah, that first initial punch is pretty good, but, yeah, it feels now, good. Now, when you first started running, how far did you run? Like, like day you, one. Even if you're a fat, day one, started running, and I'm telling you, I'm pretty mentally, like, I'm not no bitch. Like, if you're a bitch, you ain't going to run that far. But, like, I'd be huffing, puffing, out of breath. A uh, mile and a half, two miles. That's like eleven minute mile. It's kind of eleven, twelve minute mile. Kind of such just jogging. But like, if you do it and you just like, if you're getting out of breath, even if your side hurts a little bit, just keep going, push through it. Like you'll stop hurting. Don't be a bitch about it. You'll be fine. <laughs> like, if the average person out there ought to be able to run two miles for yeah. sure. So even you get that fat boy pain, it's just push through. <laughs> You get that uh, little fat boy pain, that, that pain in the side, and it's just push through it. It'll go away. It'll go away. 
It'll go away. I don't know. You're a crazy guy. Just pushing through that shit. Only running a mile, mile. No, I do two miles. Okay, okay. But it's 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 at a good pace too, you, though. Yeah, you're probably running a faster than me. I don't know about that. I'm not a real. Mm, I don't know. I want my lungs to hurt by the end of it. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah, that's my goal. Jeff, nothing to, to watch to, you no, run. Nothing no. to add. No, I used to run all the time when I was a young guy that's, like y'all. That's what he says. You ought to run now, Jeff. Well, shit jiggles and hurts more. I need to walk more. I feel yeah. you. I, I mean, that's you. that's the honest to God truth. If I uh, if if I lost fifty more pounds and I was running, I still wouldn't want to run. I think I'd walk just because you're older, your knees and shit hurt more. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I hammered the bike for a while. I hurt my knee, couldn't do a whole lot, couldn't run, so I was hammering the bike. But do nothing but twisted steel and sex appeal now, my friend. Dude, I'm telling you, I drift sexy right now, but <laughs> sexy sale no more. It ain't for sale no I, more. I like your jacket you wore the other night. You look pretty sharp. Yeah, like that, that plaid, that's sweet. Yeah, yeah that was, uh, we had to go to that wedding last weekend in Michigan. And uh, yeah, buddy, like, it's like, got a dog. Oh, well, I didn't, I didn't, honestly, it's not really trying. <laughs> like, hey, I look good, but that wasn't trying. <laughs> where, where was the wedding at in Michigan? Uh, you know, where uh, up around Cadillac, you know, yes, that that's about where we stayed up by Mackinac Island area. Yeah, yeah, around that area. It's pretty up there, and that Gorgeous. wasn't even you trying, that was just you rolling out of the bed looking that good. Buddy, I ain't gonna lie, I got ready in about five minutes. <laughs> did, did, does your woman have a problem dating someone prettier than her? Um, I think it bothers her a little bit sometimes. Like I, talk, I hate to tell you this, but I do think I got better hair than you. I mean, but yeah, she, I mean, listen, she'll she'll go along with it, or, or you know, she'll she'll adjust. Yeah, people yeah. got to know their place in this world. Have Have you had any awkward exchanges with uh, fans wanting you to autograph or anything with her there, and it bothered her? No, not really. Like uh, she's been to. Uh, a couple tournaments but like really just one main one she went to, she came to the st lawrence river but not nothing too bad like she hadn't got to experience the awkwardness but she's not i'll tell you what she's pretty standoffish at first she wasn't real thrilled about the uh uh professional fisherman being known on social media all that stuff you know was not thrilled about that why um, I don't know. Yeah, she just she's low key, man. She's not like your typical woman. She don't want all the right. attention and all that stuff. Private. Fucking app opposites attract, don't they, bub? Dude, I'm telling you, it's about as opposite as you can get. Like she kind of, she kind of, she keep me in line a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. Keep me. In. You need that balance, though. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, I'm, yeah. You need, you got to have sun balance, especially me. I was teeter totter teeter totter and hard. Are you retiring the fur jacket? Hell no. <laughs> I got to find me one for Oklahoma. That's what I've been talking about. Like, what's it going to be? I've been thinking about, I've been thinking about doing like his crop top, like fur coat deal, no shirt, and some badass pants. Like, I know it's pushing it a bit, but crop top. Damn. <laughs> What, what like leather pants? What kind of pants were you doing? Um, maybe like an animal Ooh. print, you know? and then no shirt, let the chest hair hang out, tight blazer or tight fur coat, crop top with a gap between. Might have to work on the love handles a little <laughs> bit more. Ain't much. There's a little tiny bit, you know. I just, maybe I can raise the pants up a little bit, fill in that gap a little bit. But yeah, we're. It'll be, might be. I got, I got a buddy of mine whose mom passed away about two years ago, and she had tons of fur coats. There's no market for them at all anymore. And I will see him. I'll no. ask him about that. People don't do the fur coats as much anymore, you know? What no. kind of boots would you wear to tie this all together? You got to have, you know, if you're going animal print, <clears throat> maybe like red boots? Yeah. Yeah, possibly. Like I don't know, man. I got I wore these gray crocodile ones last year, 
and you talk about freaking hemping. <laughs> like, real, I'm talking about like real gray crocodiles. Like, legit. Some gators. I can't remember what. <clears throat> Yeah, damn things cost me. Damn, I don't even want to say how much that cost because this. <laughs> I met I met a guy in Mexico. Him and his wife were at the same resort me and Michelle were at, and we got to be friends with them. His name's Puddin, and yeah. Puddin has they dress up for their fantasy football draft after year, and he wore a a lime green looking blazer and all this shit. But he had the coolest fucking shoes on. He had some platform shoes, and they had crystal clear. Uh, <clears throat> heels on them and they had live goldfish swimming in them hold on hold on <laughs> this first off was short as hell obviously he's wearing effing platforms because if I wore platforms I'd fucking knock myself out on the damn door and goldfish live, gold, live goldfish were swimming in his fucking the platform part of them You know what? I'm actually digging the idea, except I put some uh, minnows. Some minnows in there? Not some damn shiners. Or maybe a crawfish in there or something or another. But I, I'm catching the drift, like, for real. <laughs> I tell you, they were sharp looking. It was it was, had, you had, it was pimp day at their draft. Everybody had to dress like a pimp or something. And he had him a cane, and on his cane, he had a ball on top of it, and it had a goldfish in the ball, too, of his cane. Now you got my now you got the gear. <laughs> now you got the gear spinning. Now I'm gonna be looking for fish tank shoes or something. <laughs> That's what's gonna be at the top of my Google search. <laughs> you gotta get a cane too, though. That brings it all together. Uh, ain't gonna be a goldfish. Nope, nope. You gotta do shiners. Um Yeah, yeah, the shoes are important. I'm surprised you didn't bring out the gator shoes to the wedding. Uh no, I, they wanted that. I talked to him about it. And he said something about <laughs> Something about like, man, why don't you wear a uh, sleeveless uh, camo tuxedo? And I was like, might do that. But he said it was a little more casual and said something about the fur coat. I said, listen, I would, but listen, I'm not stealing your thunder. No, you don't like, want to do that. The bride doesn't want that. I mean, what bride wants to be upstaged? Um, yeah. yeah, you got a little bit of respect in certain avenues, and damn sure someone's fighting. Like, uh, I mean, yeah. There's probably not a wedding I couldn't show up to and not look better than the bride and the groom. But let's be real here. I was just little low key, casual. Yeah, and still look good as shit. I mean, half the weddings don't last anyways. I mean, it's not like they're not going to have a second one, probably. So, not like you're going to ruin very many of them. You're not wrong. (laughs) You're not wrong there. Oh, shit. All right, Maddie, we're going to let you go here, buddy. It's been... Uh, Are you going to come hunt with us this year? You coming to Texas? Hopefully we meet him in Canada. Yeah, I'll come to Texas. And are you going to go to Mexico with us next year still, too? Oh, Jesus. Mexico ain't ready for that. Yeah. That, I'll oh. get you some dates, or Michelle will get some dates, or Jesse to you pretty quick. Yeah. I'm down, and I'll for sure. I need to double-check on that October. Uh, text me the October date, so we'll get that shit dialed up, I too. will. Fuck, now mm. I got to start getting my love handles in check because Maddie's going to be topless in Mexico. I don't want to be I don't yeah, I don't want to be upstage in front in front of my own wife. Buddy, listen. <laughs> listen. Well, at least I get her all hot and There you go. There you and go. then and then Why? we can go back to the room. Yeah. So yeah, that'll work out good. That'll work out. He's good, priming right? everybody yeah. up. Priming priming everybody up. Maddie's the primer. Yep. <laughs> you're a good wingman all right bud we're gonna let you go um i'll i'll uh i'll have jeff send you the dates for for october and then uh yeah open whenever whenever you can get down to texas we'd love to have you down here i'm all down right, buddy. Sure. we'll talk to you soon all be right. safe and if there's anything you need from us let us know okay all, all right. right see you bud, see you, bye, bud. bye that guy's funny as hell he is he'll be so much fun i must <clears throat> i would laugh so much i would hurt that mcdonald's Put all that <laughs> shit on joking. there, and then nine, nine freaking nine patties, patties on that corner, or on a Big Mac. You imagine getting that to go though, and you're driving down the road, and you're like, "What the fuck just happened to my Big Ooh. Mac?" Boy, that ain't no shit. Oh, uh, set star. Oh, uh, Matthew. They said they're having a hard time finding people to uh, do season two of quarterback. They don't like to have that right up their ass. Could you imagine if they'd been Aaron Rodgers this year? Yeah, that would have been like, "Whoa, shit! What are we gonna do now?" Yeah, I'm fucking. Depressed over that? Gutted. 
I've had so many people ask me how you handle this. We well, didn't say much. It sucks for football. That's what I was going to say. Like there, there are a handful of people, a handful of players that played that position that were magical in any sport. You got, you know, you got MJ, you got Kobe, you got LeBron for better or worse, love him or hate him. Um, you know, Tom Brady and Peyton Manning were different because they were kind of they were surgical about the way. Yeah, they but played. you didn't want them to be out either. It's bad for football. No, no, no. no. But I'm saying like whenever Rodgers took the field and the way his athleticism was, like you know the hail marys that he completed, you expected magic every time. And there's only a handful of guys that ever played the game, and you were like, you're gonna see something special. And the fact, and it's the biggest storyline of the summer. The biggest storyline that's gonna that was gonna carry throughout football, and we were gonna get to watch it all. Um, and that fucking defense, they're good. I mean, and the run game that they've got, like all the pieces were in place for Rodgers to thrive, have a very good shot at playing for a Lombardi. Did you see what Robert Salia said today? Uh-uh. He said, people are putting us out for loss. He said, we're not done. They're, def- they're not as good as they would have been. There's no doubt about they're it. They're going to win a lot of games 17 to 10. They're, they're a good football team. A very now, good football team, but... They need to beef up that offensive line. Yes. I told you the very first snap that Rodgers took, I said, that line is going to be a problem. Yep. Um, and evidently, Rodgers was not a fan of that cut block. He had been telling Nathaniel Hackett all offseason, I don't like the cut block. You got to get the ball out too quick, and you don't have. I don't have time to use my athleticism and get that big shot downfield. It was a cut block. Guy missed it, and Rodgers was trying to make a play, and... He just had his foot Just a planted. freak deal. But, th- but this is going to be the end of artificial turf in the NFL. I hope so. And, you know, there was there was one doctor that saying our turf had nothing to do with it. But, like, if you look at it, like, his foot was locked into place. It had nowhere to go. Well, I've... I've you would at least figure, like, grass, it's going to kind of slide out from under you. I tore both my Achilles in two different instances. Right. And neither one of them got hung up on anything. It was just... It's that age... Actually, the doctor. I don't even think his age had anything that, to do with it. It's got a lot to do with it. The doctor told me when you're 35 years and up, first of all, he told me this. He said, it's a white 35 year old and up uh, injury. Mm. Now, you can be any color and tear. Everybody's got right. an Achilles, but they see more white 35 year old men. But I think that's because there's more white 35 year old guys playing softball still and shouldn't be playing softball. Right. But it's a very, very painful injury. And I told you as soon as when he sat back down, I said something big. Wrong. Yes, you, you, and you were exactly right. But I've been there. I've tore both of them at two different times, and I learned a lot the first time. For the second time, I got over my injury a whole lot quicker. But you got to go four weeks and not put no. You can't. It, it's just crazy how your foot has to be hung up at a, at an angle the whole time. It's a shitty act. It's a shitty recovery, and they're getting better at it. But it's just one of them things that that thing when it it's like spaghetti when it strings. Yeah, and they got to put all them pieces back together. And, and it's bad, but what they need out of Zach Wilson is they need Zach Wilson to be Brock Purdy. Don't Game fuck, manager. Don't fuck up. Let your defense keep you in all the games. Take advantage of their screw-ups. Go score 17 to 20 points a game and win, and win 80% of your games. Well, and everybody was talking about, well, Tom Brady could be the savior. They said that offense that they run, that Nathaniel Hackett runs, is so complex. Like, you can't just get – you have to have a guy – that is used to that terminology. You have to have a guy that is used to the system and the checks and everything else. Like you can't just go get a Tom Brady and expect him to learn that offense. And I wouldn't worry about him learning it. He's too old. I just saw a deal. Their headline said Tom Brady's not in the running for Jets quarterback, and neither is Colin Kaepernick. Why the fuck is Kaepernick even mentioned? He ain't played football in ten years, probably. His, his people reached out to him. His people reached his, out to him. He has. His people need to learn. Nobody wants him around their football program right. at all. If he was 27 years old, 25 maybe, he's got to be 30-something years old now. He ain't played football in forever. You know, I just, I don't, I, I, that, that's gotten old. He's not nowhere near ready to be playing football anymore. But I, uh, you know, I and when Rodgers went to the Jets, I was kind of, you know, back and forth. But then, you know, seeing hard knocks and everything, and it's just like, they they really and then seeing them play on Monday night with the defense the way it is, yeah, 
you know, and it sucks for Rodgers, it sucks for that organization, and it sucks for football fans. Do you think he plays again? Yes, he's not going out like that. I, th- I think so, too. I think he'll come back next year. Now, if Zach Smith has a good – or Zach Wilson. Wilson has a good year this year, it's going to be pretty interesting to see what happens because the Jets, if he has a really good year and they are sold on Aaron Rodgers coming back next year, that's big-time trade bait. Yeah. A good quarterback. Now, another question. You talked about the, the quarterback show, and they showed the six or seven guys that have turned that down. Mm-hmm. Them guys are crazy to turn that down. Oh, yeah. Kirk Cousins absolutely was nobody. I mean, he was an NFL starting quarterback, so I don't mean a nobody, and he hadn't achieved, and he's a great guy. But he had there wasn't much marketing on him. He's on TV all the time now. Right, he's everywhere now. Because he was on that quarterback show, and he right. showed that he's a really good guy. And that's going to do the same to Matt Stafford. I don't yes. know anything about Matthew Stafford. But he's going to come out ahead. In, uh, Unless you're the kid from Atlanta. He looked like a real dipshit. Yeah, he did. But, I mean, I'm, just, I'm sure it still did good for. Who was the other guy on that? Mahomes. Mahomes, both. Mahomes and, and Mahomes is big anyways. Right. Um, they said Jalen Hurts turned it down. I think Jalen Hurts is a fool to turn it down. Yeah. Because he has already been to Super Bowl. It would help him marketing so much more. Whoever his business manager is, she said, hey. This is really going to be good for you in the pocketbook later. Look down at the what road. Hard Knocks did for Rodgers. Every everybody kind of had this. He's arrogant. He's not a good teammate, you know. And they, he kind of had that persona. And then Hard Knocks gets there, and he's super personable. He's got a great attitude. He's always helping people. Now this, he's also on a new team. He might not have been that way in Green Bay. Jordan Love. He texted Jordan Love before his game yeah. and told him, "Hey, you reach out if you need anything. I'm proud of you." So I'm thinking a lot of what we heard in the media was the media trying to cause problems. Yes. And maybe not. I don't know. Maybe he was a dick in Green Bay the last couple of years. No, I, I don't know. His David Bakhtari sure came to his offense over him getting hurt. Defense, yeah. I mean, they need – but those guys that turned it down I think are crazy. Stafford signed up for it. Um, it would be great for somebody like um, – one of these young guys that's uh, one of the one of the rookie kids that's quarterback. They may not want the distraction, but I don't really think it's a distraction. It shouldn't be much of a distraction at all. Show your life. Yeah. You know, Justin Fields turned it down. I don't know why. There's a kid right now that is he's a great fantasy quarterback. I don't know if he's going to be a great NFL quarterback, but would do his marketing a ton to be on that show. Yeah. But Kirk Cousins should show them that by what's going on. Um, before we get off here, what I'm embarrassed for the University of Oklahoma. What'd they do? Art Bryles. Did you hear about that? Mm-mm. Art Bryles' son-in-law, Jeff Lebby, is the offensive coordinator for Oklahoma. Art Bryles and his family went to the game. Mm-hmm. After the game was over, they went on the sidelines, and they talked to Jeff after the game was over. And I guess Art Bryles was wearing an OU hat and maybe a, a jacket or something. I don't know. Well, they had to apologize for him being down there because he does not disgrace the University of Oklahoma to have Art Bryles involved. It's <laughs> a big-ass fucking deal. Right. Absolutely ridiculous. Now, Urban Meyer is an analyst. You're going right. to let Urban Meyer, they're embarrassed about what Art Bryles did at Baylor. And even the, the the athletic director, I mean, I'll read this real quick, what he said today. Did you see uh, Matt Rule? Did you see his uh, little press conference about praying? No. And then he backed it up? He Evid- backed it up as he changed his thoughts on it? Yeah. Like mid-sentence. He was like, yeah, I had invited Shadur to, pr- to pray with us before the game. I always pray before the game with my pr- with my players. And then he's like, well, well, not really pray, but just have a, have a moment of reflection. No. And, you know, I've got, a, I've got kids with uh, different backgrounds, and I want to be open to all uh, religions. And so not pray, but just have a, have a little moment before the game. And, but That's you, knew what he want, you knew what he was saying. Yeah, he wanted to pray, and there's nothing wrong with praying. And, then he, proud of and that. then he was like, whoa, shit, I can't say that. Yeah. After the game, Oklahoma AD John Castellino released the following statement. I was just as disappointed as many of our fans when I learned of the post of the post game situation tonight. It shouldn't have happened and it was my expectations it never would. Based on boundaries we previously set, I've addressed it with appropriate staff. The whole same thing the whole thing seems like a complete miscommunica- miscommunication that turned out destri- disastrous. I can't even read today. Whether it was Jeff Levy not telling anyone or someone not doing their job. You, can, you can't just let this happen. No school wants a man like Art Bryles on their field wearing their logo. While Art Bryles may be family to Jeff Levy, sometimes it's best to leave the family at home, especially when your father-in-law is Art Bryles. Joe Castellino, you can kiss my fat white ass. What a prick. Hmm. I mean, that's Art Bryles never has been convicted of a damn thing. I'll bet you 
If you go look on the sidelines at OU, they've got a player on the sidelines that's been having some kind of problems legally. Right. I'll bet they'll have an ex-football player they'll come and let stand on the sidelines that's been arrested for something. I'm not throwing Joe Mixon under the bus on here, but Joe Mixon knocked the shit out of a girl. And Oklahoma still let him play football. Mm-hmm. He was 18 years old. Supposedly she used the N-word around him. I don't give a shit what you that you don't because someone calls you something, you shouldn't hit somebody. I don't care who you are. What they call you, if they hit you and you retaliate, that's different. But someone calling you a name is no reason to hit someone. Right. But he'll still let him be it, – it, it's bullshit. And I think it makes the University of Oklahoma looks no different than if they was in fucking San Francisco or something. And I think most OU fans are embarrassed by all this stuff too. Yeah. If I was <clears throat> Texas A&M University, they're going to fire Jimbo Fisher before the season's out probably because they're not very good. I would hire Art Browse. He'll never coach again. And that's a shame. And I'm not a big Art Bryles guy, but I get sick and tired of these people and this woke shit doing this crap. But for the the Oklahoma's AD to say that about Jet, Art Bryles is wrong. But if Urban Meyer comes to their stadium, I'll bet you he, he's an analyst. I bet they don't do shit about him. Right. And Urban Meyer covered up more shit than anybody has. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, that's my... I haven't one. got to watch Swamp King yet. That's but. a really good... It's, it's a good deal. The players kind of turn on Tebow when they have some, some problems. A lot of jealousy. You'll have that. T- Tebow was a hell of a football player. Yeah. Maybe the greatest college f- player ever. Yeah. Arguably. Mm. It, it arguably has to be up there. I don't know. There's a bunch. There there, there have been a lot of really good players, but there, there's he he was uh, he was Superman. He was really was very, very, very good. A great line around him. He had great players that played with him, but he was a money guy. Played yeah. really, really good. And he was a good person. You know, someone said, I saw a meme that said uh, Aaron Rodgers lasted, uh, his New York Jet football career lasted, was shorter than Tim Tebow's night on his honeymoon. <laughs> the memes were were quick. And oh, I, and terrible. Um, yeah, some of them were a little bit. But yeah, uh, so the, 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 the guy that does Achilles is the team doctor for the Packers. So that's who's going to operate on Rodgers? He's the best in the nation. So Rodgers will have to go to Green Bay, uh, which everybody is assuming he's going to use this guy because this it, this guy is like revolutionized uh, Achilles surgery. So Rodgers is going to have to fly into Green Bay to have his The people in Achilles Green Bay should have no no problems with Rodgers. No, 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 no. So it's he, just interesting that he's got to go back to Green Bay. It did cost this. Green Bay a first-round draft pick, though. It did. It did. Did you see the one bar that was uh, if, Jet, yes. if the Jets lose, uh, you drink free tonight, you booze? Yep. If if Aaron Rodgers starts a game and the Jets lose, the drinks are on them. Right. Well, Rodgers went out. Everybody started racking up, racking up the bar tab, thinking, you know, like I, I thought they were – I didn't think they were shot in hell. I don't know what has happened to Josh Allen. He has taken a, taken a big step back. Well, I know why, what happened to him. What? I drafted him. Oh, well. That was the curse of death. I needed eight points <clears throat> out of him in the second half. Eight points. I don't know if Stefan Diggs is in his head. I don't know if he's just got this YOLO attitude and he's just banging it just downfield thinking that my guy's going to beat you. He looks terrible. He has he has regressed. Big time. I don't know if it's the Madden Maybe curse. Maybe it's because Brian Dayball's not there no more. Somebody said. They're, they're, you, get those, you get these coordinators – that elevate these people and then they leave because they did such a good job elevating these people and then guys are lost without them. I mean, I don't know, but he looked awful in the first game. I thought they were going to run away, run away with it. I mean, that stadium had all of the air taken out of it as soon as Rodgers got caught. That off. catch by Garrett, though. Woohoo! Yeah. That kid, did you He's see special. the catch? Mm-hmm. He's got a lot of time. It's a shame because there's no telling what he would have done with Aaron Rodgers. But and he still might. It, it, next Zach, year. Well, the, he had a good year last year with fucking Michael no, White and Zach. Wood. Just, it's just, and, and like whenever you look at all the pieces that have to be in place to do this again next year, everybody's a year older. Uh, there's no no telling what other injuries are going to stack up just throughout the course of the year, and it's just like you really, really feel like one slipped away. But yeah, I was, I was. Well, I'm now the AFC East now. doesn't look. Yeah, you are too. Nope, I'm done. I'm going to double down on jujitsu until. Uh, Till goose season gets here, and we're so you're not watching football no more, huh? I don't really have a strong desire to, no. Because a guy that you weren't even a big Jet fan, 
I like the way that he played football. So I really wasn't going to probably. So what about watch. Trevor Lawrence? He plays a lot the same way. Nah, I don't care to watch. Jeff Y'all Lawrence. listen to this shit, and by week four, Andy will be all into it. And he'll have somebody else. Go ahead. You did this the same Mark thing. It down. You, last time you did this was when uh, Mark it down. when Aaron Rodgers got hurt last time <clears throat> against Minnesota. You did the same shit. If we could go back and bring them same up, you were just as down on football then too. But I mean, like I was gonna, <clears throat> I was gonna, it was gonna be an event this weekend. Jets are playing Cowboys. Oh, I actually had looked into getting you some tickets for you and the Boy, boys for this weekend. I'm fucking glad we didn't buy that because I had looked at the same thing. I was like, you know, it might be cool, but I've been to a Cowboy game in Cowboy Stadium. I have zero to go, zero desire to go back. I looked them last week. And I thought, you know, Michelle, I got Jesse. Z. I said Andy and Jesse could take the two boys. No. They would have so much fun doing that. I'm so I'm, glad I'm now. Telling, I'm telling you now. I'm telling. I've, I'm not going back to Cowboy Stadium to watch a football game. Because that big TV sits right there, like that TV is right there, and that's and it's the exact same broadcast, same camera angles, and everything of the Fox broadcast. You're not watching it on the ground; you're watching the TV. No, well, you try to, then you're like, "Oh shit, there is a game going on down there," and then like you just you you look up for a replay or whatever, and your eyes never get taken off of it. So I have zero desire to go back to a game at Cowboy Stadium. I would rather go watch Texas Tech play Tarleton. Was, Honestly. I mean, I would rather go watch a Texas Tech game. I'd rather go watch a college game. Does Tech beat Tarleton? We're, we're storming the field. If we, <laughs> goalposts are coming down if we beat Tarleton. But, um, yeah, it's it sucks for and, – and another thing, like, that's like the – he's the last of the – He's the, Rodgers is the last of that generation of quarterbacks. That's it. Nobody else. I guess Stafford. There'll be another one. There'll be another r- r- big run of good quarterbacks. No, no, no. no. I just happens. mean like that that generation of players. Yes, is done. Like he, well, yeah, they're getting old it. now. They are. They are. But I think that guy's on his way out too. Chargers it, head coach. It's uh, Yeah, he better turn it around quick. He's losing his players. Well, they look terrible in the fourth quarter. Their offensive play calling is terrible. They got way too much talent to be that bad. Yeah. Way too much talent to be that bad. You would figure. And now you got Kellen Moore calling plays. That was a disaster but yeah i just that's what they look like they look like the dallas cowboys when we when we did the schedule a couple months ago i told you i wasn't too thrilled about a lot of it well the afc is does not look to be as locked down as it does because kansas city does not look now the chris jones is gonna make their defense a lot better it's just one game they played a good detroit game without their best second best offensive player and their best defensive player so they'll be back okay cincinnati does not look good at all because I think Cincinnati's got the same problem that the New York Giants have. They have zero offensive linemen, and they just cut Louis L. Collins today. Right. So somebody will pick him up. Maybe the Jets. They need to do something before they get. I, poor Zach Wilson is going to get the shit kicked out of him in Dallas next week. They might have. I don't know what the record for sacks is in a game. They might beat it. They might double it. They're very good. But I'm going to tell you what. Dallas's defense is good, and that offensive line is. Awful. Yes. That's another reason Tom Brady doesn't need to go to now, the Jets. His old um, ass, unmobile, never runs. He'd get fucking crushed. I bet you Dak's under a lot of duress this game, too. Yeah. Jets are very, very good. All right. We're going to get off here. We've got, who do we got tomorrow? Cam Smith. Cam Smith. So, hunting football, it'll be right in our wheelhouse. Yep. And then we'll have our pick them again on we'll Thursday. We'll ask him about what he thinks about uh, turf versus grass. Very good guy to have it on, former NFL player. Thank y'all for listening to us. God bless y'all and have a great day. Oh, check out our sponsors. Go check out Dirty Duck Coffee, Dive Bomb Industries, Hemp Hill Farms, Alpha Outdoor Specialties, Stanfield Outfitters, Mossberg, Double T British Kennels, Ducks Unlimited, Lucky Duck, Looking Glass Podcast, Shin Gear, Pacific Calls, and Boss Shot Shows.